The following safety DVD shows a step-by-step -step guide in the use of the Safeland Rescue Lowering Device for the evacuation of injured or unconscious personnel. It's important that the casualty is assessed by a qualified medical provider on their condition and suitability prior to them being lowered by the Safeland Rescue Device. The Safeland Rescue should only be used as a last means of evacuation of a casualty when all other conventional methods are unavailable or obsolete. In the event of an emergency, and you have to deal with a casualty situation, which means you can't make your escape by normal means, you should make your way to the nearest Safeland Rescue storage area. Select a rescue unit from the storage area. Check the unit for any obvious signs of damage. If necessary, replace the unit and select another. Look for or feel for the easy tear point on the vacuum pouch found within the red square 80 millimeters from the top of the bag on both sides. Choose one side and tear the bag open. Once open, remove your rescue unit. Store the vacuum pouch back into the cabinet as to prevent a slipping hazard. Use the instruction card on the front of the bag to re-familiarize yourself with the safe operation of the equipment. Taking your rescue unit with you, proceed to the evacuation point or to where the casualty is situated. Once there, you need to check your surrounding area. Look down below for any hazards, structural impediments, fire or debris. Check above for falling objects or structure. Also at this time, look for a suitable attachment point, either a purpose-built attachment point for the rescue unit or a piece of primary steelwork. If you do have to resort to using a handrail, then attach as close to a stanchion post as possible. If there are any hazards in this area, then you and the casualty should move to a safer location, taking your rescue unit with you. Once you've established that the area is safe to evacuate from, place the rescue unit between your feet. Open the top flap of the bag and the first thing you'll find is the securing carabiner. Remove and pull the carabiner from the bag the other rescue components will follow. Now, let's have a look at the equipment. The securing carabiner. To operate, pull in the lever. Once connected, screw up the barrel to lock in position. The descender handle. The high strength tape. The fixing hook with the harness already connected in position. And the tape bag. Other accessories that can be found on the unit are In the side pocket of the bag, there is an emergency knife. The knife has a guarded blade and is retrievable if dropped via a lanyard attached to the bag. Use the knife only as a last resort to cut the casualty free from the rescue unit or to assist others. In the opposite pocket of the bag, there's a wire strop. This will be used in the event you have to attach to any structural elements where the securing carabiner cannot be fitted directly. The rescue unit is made of highly durable materials, each individual rescue unit having been load tested to 600 kilograms, six times average body weight, and has an ultimate tensile strength in excess of 1,000 kilograms. Once the components have been removed from the bag, you must choose a suitable anchor point. Options will be at a dedicated attachment point, connect directly with the securing carabiner, open the carabiner by pulling in the lever. Once connected, screw up the barrel to lock in position. For attachments onto primary steelwork or handrails, remove the wire strop from the side pocket of the bag. Wrap the wire strop around the structure and attach your securing carabiner through both carbine hooks fitted to the wire strop. Once connected, screw up the barrel to lock in position. At this point, if required, pull the sit harness down onto the deck. Dependent on the type of the injury to the casualty, either assist the casualty into the harness or alternatively, remove the harness from the fixing hook in readiness to attach to a suitable stretcher.
The Safeland Rescue can be used in conjunction with any type of stretcher that's fitted with a suitable lifting bridle, where the fixing hook can then be attached. Once the casualty is within the harness or stretcher, assist or lift the casualty to the escape area. Check the descent area is still clear. If needed, assist or lift the casualty over the handrail. If gates are fitted at the escape area, these should be opened. At this time, you should be controlling the tape with your hand, pulling any slack back through the system as the casualty is being raised. Once the casualty is clear of the handrail or edge, pull the tape from the bag, allowing the tape to feed through your fingers at a controlled rate, lowering the casualty either to the ground below or directly to the sea. Even if you did let go of the tape, the rescue unit is designed to continue lowering the casualty at a controlled and safe speed. If you need to lock the system off for a period of time due to a hazard appearing below or to await a rescue craft to arrive, then, retaining pressure on the tape, pull a length of tape from the bag and tie the tape onto a suitable piece of structure. To undo the lock off, untie the knot, retaining pressure on the tape and continue to lower the casualty. The Safeland Rescue can be retrieved by pulling the tape back through the system ready for reuse. If you have any further questions,